a lot of great ideas, and one of them is uh, these garden products. These are manufactured by my father-in-law, and I would really like to take over that company because he's got a full-time job like I do, and he's making a lot of extra money so he can buy a new Mercedes every three years. What do you think? That's a good business idea, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm divorced from his daughter, so that's probably not going to happen. But I have a lot of other ideas. <laughs> uh, I found this flame gun. This is really, really cool. This, you know, you can eradicate lots of weeds in a really short time. That would be great. Let's import that. Or what about some high-tech adult toys? That would be fun. <laughs> Or Japanese toilets. If you've seen those, they'll wash you, they'll dry you, and I mean, everybody's got to have that. Let's import those. Cool company idea, right? Lots of choices. Well, how many has a mobile phone? You don't have to put your hand up. Are you worried that it will get scratched? Yes. Well, my first company was the mobile socks, where you could protect your phone. This is really cool. This was a big thing in Asia. So I went right up. I ordered 10,000 of them together with a good friend. The company lasted six weeks. <laughs> My very good friend, he found a girlfriend that I never saw him again. <laughs> and I still have the 9,000 mobile socks. <laughs> so I took a few notes from that experience. And one lesson learned is Denmark is not ready for phone protection. And this was 10 years ago, right? And don't let someone else choose the design. I'm sorry, I'm just going to show you that again. <laughs> and do the numbers. If you sell 1,000, you make three kroner per piece. There's a lot of work with direct sales. Probably not worth it. Well, so full-time job. This is, uh, you know, we got to get up there. Let's step it up a little bit. And I was doing great at my job. I had incredible numbers. And it was just going record high sales. I got to go into business for myself. So I started Hill Hayden Consulting, and I immediately did a good deal with the company I was working for so I could recruit new salespeople and I could do sales training and get lots of money for it. And at the same time, I found some great books, which the company was using, and I got the import rights, so I became a book importer. I sold some to India, and recently, was it two years ago, I sold some to a German competitor of that book company. <laughs> but anyway, and I had my uh, age rating. The A is for everything, as an et. And my good friend, he had just moved to Thailand, he called me up and said, I got this idea, there's an old man here, he's got a bed linen company, and he wants to sell it, what should I do? I said, well, buy it, of course, <laughs> listen to it, how boring is it to tell, I almost bought a bed linen company. <laughs> it's much more cool, I bought a bed linen company, and I moved to Thailand. So, of course, as his friend, who got to import it and sell it in Denmark, I did. Well. It didn't really work out because the uh, first consulting lasted about three months. And I learned, first of all, you got to have a plan. You can't just jump. And you, maybe you should sign a contract with the company so they'll actually buy your sales courses. I did do some recruiting, but eventually I learned wealth is equal the days you can survive without income. <laughs> so after three months, I got a full time job again. <laughs> well, there's a few tips. You can prepare while still working. Probably should have done that. And maybe just focus on one time or maybe two. Well, we saw that fun adult stuff, right? <laughs> I gotta have a web shop. Everybody's gotta have a web shop. This is just the coolest thing, right? So I just spent, I don't know, three months designing? That's not writing a website. Well, I wrote, it's not working right now, but you can send an email. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learned something from that too. A well-running web shop is far better than a unique design. <laughs> Customers only care about price and delivery time. And a good tip, and I did this eventually, just buy an instant web shop, put a logo on it, and you're up in two days. And then use your time learning search engine optimization <coughs> instead of fiddling around in Photoshop. <laughs> But I did actually have a huge success. I did get this web shop, and it went skyrocketing. I got unique products. I started selling them to all over Europe, and I got sold out often. And I bought and bought, and I went to the bank with a 16-page business plan. And they say yes. I borrowed a little more than a half a million kroner 
and I filled my garage with lots of exciting stuff. Now, remember, I was, I was divorced, single, so I had a lot of things going on. <laughs> I was the coolest place to visit, I tell you. Well, everything went up. I even hired a salesman. Remember, I still had a full-time job, but this was like a secret super company I was starting there. So my salesman was running a trying to sell stuff, and I just kept buying. But at, at one time, I didn't have any more money. I just filled the garage. And what I didn't realize is, well, you know, you should probably just uh, ask the customers what their most sold product is, and then maybe sell that to them. Well, what turned out is my biggest customer went bankrupt. I lost a lot of money there. And I had to, because I couldn't buy anything in. So if people weren't buying what I had in stock. So I had to ally myself with a distributor in England who wasn't operating in Denmark. And this was a really, really cool deal because I could reuse all their graphics, I could copy their catalog, and this was just going to be great. Unfortunately, he was kind of like me. He had other ideas. The manager had bought a hotel in Spain, which he didn't know anything about, so he had to move to Spain. So my last order to that company, they had zero on stock. Now, you have to imagine that a customer purchased something online from a web shop who didn't have it on stock, who purchased it from me who didn't have it on stock, who purchased it from a company in England who didn't have it on stock. You have to imagine the emails and the calling, and people get really angry. People want whatever they bought, you know, tomorrow. So, nope. This was, this was you know, from success to failure, this went really fast. Well, what do you do? You actually just go all in. You bet everything. I, the company, my biggest company went bankrupt, contacted me. Do you uh, want to start it up again? Hell yeah. <laughs> so I actually ended up uh, with a little bit bigger company. But first, let's see what we learned here. Again, a well-running web shop really is better than a unique design. Because again, I used too much time on designing, and it wasn't functioning really well. Mr. Cashflow is the boss. This is a really good lesson you should take note. Logistics. That's a new word. <laughs> Moving boxes. And always start with a few samples that you're importing. Don't you just, just learned that before. I know. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's what real failure is. That's when you don't really get it. And and read Moving the Goods, this is a really good book. I still have it at home. Well, I put all my chips in every last, I don't remember if I borrowed anything, but at least I withdrawn a little bit more than I had on my account. And I bought this, my competitor, <laughs> or, or my, my biggest customer that went, went, went bankrupt. So now we, I was the owner of a retail shop, a home party business with 20 home party girls, I still had my wholesale company, and this also had suddenly on two web shops, and it was really fun. And I also had my full time job. Luckily, my office was really close, so after uh, getting off from work, I could go visit and speak with the people working there. Now, what I really didn't know was that the people I got involved with were not perfectly clean, so one of the three had to leave, and later on, the one more had to leave for personal reasons, and I all of a sudden was sole owner, managing director, a little bit too much to handle. And I, I actually had to go to the doctor. <laughs> uh, stress really, really hit me. And, and I was given two choices. I could get some fun pills, or I could go see a psychiatrist for, I think it was 1,200 per hour. So I immediately got well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let's see what we learned from that. Well, trust is good. <laughs> Control is much better. Keep your eye on the ball. Because what happened was it, it, the company was actually running really well, but I wasn't there. And the employees just bought and bought exactly what I'd already learned. They turned it into a lingerie, just bought. The stock was just increasing. Exactly the same. Learn from it. And then stand your ground. If some of the employees want to use all the money, say no. Don't just, yeah, figure it out. No. Keep your eye on the ball. And tip, get help at the first sign of crisis. Don't wait. Whew. Well, I didn't want to run a business after that. That was really, really tough. It eventually, everything was sold. Got rid of everything. I don't have anything to do with that. 
business at all. But my father-in-law, ex-father-in-law called me up, do you still want to buy the company? Uh, well, because my daughters don't want to run it. Of course I do. <laughs> yes. Jump right in again. Didn't have the money, but I'd already had experience. I know I can go to the bank. I can borrow more money, right? I already, yeah. Oh. No, you have too much personal debt. <laughs> what? But I already said yes. I gotta have this. This is my this is my original business idea. I gotta have it, right? Well, I did eventually get it, and. Uh, we did a. We worked it out. I borrowed some money from my parents, and I thought I visited all the banks that I could. And, and what we did is we did a seller financing. So I ended up having to work in my own company for free, and everything I made I had to give to the former owner until it was paid. And I think last year I paid everything off. So, yeah. <laughs> status report. Did you know that banks can hook you up and see how much you owe? <laughs> Never give up. And stay under the limit for your personal debt. <laughs> the world is not a cake we must share. It's a bakery where we can all bake a cake. I wrote that quote many years ago, but I maybe should have written uh, the world is where, uh, maybe it's a restaurant. Yes, let's open a restaurant. <laughs> Excellent idea. My, my wife's a great cook, and of course we should have a restaurant. So, and she's actually, she's a bachelor of math and physics, and she wanted to open a cleaning company. I said, no, 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 a cleaning company, that's way too low for you. You gotta, you got you know, aim higher. So we took out, I don't know how many months of our lives, turned a, building into a restaurant which had never had a kitchen before. There was no kitchen. That means we have to apply for all the approvals, everything. It's just outrageously stupid thing to do. But we, we spent our life there. We had our kids with us there. We had fun. Some friends helped us out as well. And it lasted one year. <laughs> well, dreams are not always what you think they are. They don't always live up to your expectations. Having a restaurant is not about cooking. It's about everything else. My wife worked 80 hours per week. I had to drive the kids back and forth. We did spend our evenings there, but the kids were crying, wanted their mom, but they couldn't go in the kitchen. No. <coughs> well, we learned that running a restaurant is not about cooking. We learned that location, that what you save on location, you got to spend it on marketing. So don't try to save, save on that. It was fun to try, but not the lifestyle we wanted. And I could test it on friends before you open. On our opening night, we had a queue way out into the street. We had to close. We couldn't take any more customers. Completely packed. It was just completely outrageous. And, well, with not enough food, people went home or had to leave without any food. They go directly on Facebook. Huh. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't succeeded with Facebook deleting bad reviews. <laughs> Hire some extra staff in the beginning. If this is your dream, have a restaurant, just take notes right now. And to have enough ingredients on stock. I think three or four times that week we ran out of food. So success, but because of Facebook's bad reviews, oh, they weren't bad. I think there's still a four. People still actually write that they miss it. So that's, I guess, cool enough. Well, the road to success is not straight. It looks a little bit different. Mine looked like this. <laughs> Now it now it looks a little bit like that. And actually I ended up with exactly the original dream. And my wife has now got a cleaning company. <laughs> exactly as she wanted. How cool is that? Well, what did we learn? There is no failure, only experience success. Oh, nope. Failure is repeating the mistakes you make. Failure is getting up. And know the reason for your choices. Now, have you seen this one before? Yeah. Yeah. The comfort zone. It's just dangerous, right? You gotta get out of the comfort zone. We wanna go somewhere else. We wanna reach higher. Are we sure that we really want to leave our comfort zone? 
Mine goes like this. Got a great wife, four wonderful kids, great house. I even designed it myself. Two cars, great job with freedom. I even make a really high salary. I spend one month in Thailand every year. Why on earth would I want to go somewhere and lose it all? I don't know, I still ask myself that question. I did start a new company yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, lessons learned. When you're walking on the road to success, don't forget to make stops and enjoy the scenery. Enjoy what you have. Thank you.